Welcome, I'm Pat Sheranian, and happy to be with you today. I have a wonderful guest. You're going to be so excited to know what she's all about. I certainly am, and just t tickled that she's here. Her name is Gwen Lund, L-U-N-D. Happy to have you here. Thank you. I'm so excited to share this. Good. First, we need to thank some people, and I want to talk about Kayani, of course. They're our main sponsor on this program, K-Y-A-N-I and all of the benefits. I'm going to share a couple of those I did last week and didn't get to the Cayenne Nitro FX, which is absolutely wonderful because it releases the nitric oxide in our body. And boy, is that the best thing that ever happened to me. In fact, I just left the doctor's office and I have not had any medications for diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, arthritis. I have not had anything since July of 10, 2010. They're coming up on 15 months. And I am so grateful for these products that have really changed my mm -hmm. life and uh, given me energy that I haven't had for 20 years. So very grateful for those. And um, I have a, a box here with samples in it. It's a seven-day sample box. And uh, they're $20. And it's a great way to find out about the products if you like them, if you feel good on them. So let us know in our chat room, which is pat.utahvalleylive.com. pat.utahvalleylive.com. And on the radio, it's KHQN AM, and we are live and on the air, simulcasting both places. So thank you for being with us today. Um, I want to do some shout out. Uh, one to uh, a young f a family, a mom and a daughter and a son. They own Pack Rats. It is a thrift store, brand new thrift store, been there about six months. And they're on the road to Springville. State Street, as you go down to Springville, it's past the uh, cemetery. Uh, the uh, Provo Cemetery going on the back road to Springville. And they're on the west side of the street. It's 1476 South State Street, Provo, Utah. And write their phone number down because they're just putting everything together. They're constantly buying things and uh, being given things. So their number is 801-607-5251. 607-5251. Great people to work with. They went out and found a Christmas tree. And it was exactly what I was looking for. I walked in the store and bought it while they were practically putting it together. Good people to work with. Also, I want to thank um, Annette Awasom. She is, has fairy tale hair and makeup. Now, this young lady has really found a niche in the market. She will go to your house, to your wedding reception, wherever it is that you need to be. She will come to you for hair and makeup. And when she's doing a wedding and there are a whole bunch of people involved, it's a thrill to have her there. You don't have to go to her. You can. She has a salon in her home. But let me give you Annette's phone number and call her and talk to her because she does amazing things with hair and with makeup, and you look great when your picture's taken. So her phone number is 801-380-2944. 380-2944. So give her a call if you've got big plans and you just don't know how to handle it with your hair. She can come to you and do it. And then I also want to thank Teresa out at Styling. She's out in Orm. Teresa has uh, worked with my hair and worked with me for about 18 years. I think her baby was born just a few months before I started working with her, and she's out in Orm on State Street. She's at 1464. Is that right? 1464 there? Does that mm -hmm. look right? 1464 yep. North State Street in Orm, and her number is 226-3426. No, wrong. 226-3420. And to give her a call, Stylin, S-T-Y-L-I-N. She's been in business a long time, knows what she's doing, has a great shop, lots of people out there to help her. Um, she uh, does perms and cuts and color. Um, they do all kinds of, um, what do you call it, add in the hair. Um, what's that mm -hmm. called? I can't think what it is. But they put uh, lengths on you mm -hmm. and thickness and whatever you need. And uh, Extension. extensions, that's the word I want. She does extensions, so very good. Her number again is 224-3420. I've known that number by heart. Why would I even look at that? All right, now, Kayani, we're going to be talking about that some more, but again, I'm going to offer uh, the, this box for $20. It's got seven-day samples of the drink, the Sunrise, uh, which is loaded in minerals and vitamins and uh, blueberries from Alaska. And then the Sunset, which is omega-3, pure fish oil, no mercury, guaranteed no mercury. And then the Nitro FX, 
There's also a Nitro Extreme, which is fairly new, and it costs almost twice what the Nitro FX, but it does 10 times the job. Really triggers your body to produce your own nitric oxide, gives you all kinds of energy. Now, I'm into health stuff, always looking for the next person with something that I just think is terrific, and I found her. Actually, she kind of found me. We found each other. <laughs> <laughs> and Gwen, I appreciate your coming down. She's come down from Linden, which is not too far, but with the mess of the road, you never know which one to take and how much longer it's going to take you. And I want to start right out by mentioning her purebred sourdough, and that's what we're going to be talking about for the next uh, little bit with Gwen Lund. And why don't you start out? Um, this is how much it we th and who's got this again? The herb shop. The herb shop. Across from Shopco in Orem, in Orem. About, about 45 South State. Right, and mm -hmm. that's been there forever, so mm -hmm. we all know where that is. Mm -hmm. But they're carrying this um, DVD, and uh, you're on it, and you're describing what you're going to tell us about this morning, and mm -hmm. they can have this, and anybody that's never made bread, or like I did once years ago, and it was a doorstop, we can try again. Mm -hmm. Is that true? You yes. say this is the simplest kind of bread to make mm -hmm. and very healthy. Okay, so we're going to talk about this some more, but let's start with, who are you, Gwen? Tell us all about you and where <laughs> you've come from and why sourdough bread. Um, I mean, other people might be doing genealogy, and you're doing sourdough bread, <laughs> so tell me about it. It has been a journey for me. Um, as, as, as I've noticed in life, often truth is, finding truth is a journey. It is. It, you take it, it step by step. But I was born in Minnesota, on the banks of Mississippi, pretty much, in a little town called St. Cloud, Minnesota, north of Minneapolis. Cold weather there. Yes, oh. yes. And um, in 1958, my parents were in Wadena and joined the church. And there was no one else in the whole town that would join, so they moved their whole family to Fargo. So I spent my teen years in Fargo, North Dakota. They're oh. on, in the Red River Valley. Um, Does it ever get warm there? <laughs> yeah, in the summer it does. <laughs> yeah, you it looks like an ice sheet when I look at the news. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it pretty much is. But anyway, then I came out to go to school. First I went to um, Rick's, at what it was at the time, and then I came to BYU, and I met my sweetheart there. And we've been married 41 years. What we was your maiden name? Giblet. Giblet, and that mm -hmm. is? It's English. English, okay. It sounds a little French, but. And, um, and I, we were, we've been married for 41 years. We have nine children. And for a while, we lived in St. George. And a woman in Sister in Relief Society taught me about the nutritional value of whole grain rather than white, okay. wheat, white flour. And that kind of started me off. But what really did it was my husband was in ROTC and got a chance when he went in the Army to serve in Germany. So we lived in, in southern Germany for three years. And there, I learned to love the European bread. And I, and I just tried to figure out what was the difference. I came home and made whole wheat bread, and it wasn't the same. And uh, so it's been a quest, and that's what I've discovered, is how to make the European whole, whole grain bread. And I pretty much had to translate recipes and figure it out on my own trial and error. Well, now, he speaks German, does he, your husband? Yes. and he, he's a professor at BYU. Yeah, okay, in the so German that department. Was, that was yeah, and that was an advantage, I would think. Yeah, he also went to Vienna on his mission or Austria on his mission and loved the bread. So he's been one of my greatest supporters and fans. Have you ever um, thought about opening a bakery and just doing the whole thing? Yeah, we have. But We've you overcame it. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of work. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, then let's just start right out. You came in with this big jar, and I sort of recognized it because I one time had a start for something, but I can't remember what it was. Mm -hmm. And it probably grew things by the time I moved it out of my <laughs> refrigerator. <laughs> you know, I, I have, um, you know, a lot of talents. One of them is, in, is interviewing, which I really love. I, I shouldn't say I have a lot of talents. I have few. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of them is not cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. I had a big family, and um, I, I cooked then, and then when everybody was gone, it was like I just stopped cooking, <laughs> and I fix things. Mm -hmm. I find myself fixing mm -hmm. or, or putting a roast in or something like that, and then yeah. I decided I should cut out as much meat as possible, so then you really do. You wind up just fixing. Mm -hmm. But bread has been interesting because I was raised in South Carolina, and of course we were raised on white bread. Mm -hmm some wheat, but mostly white, and white biscuits and mm -hmm. and things of that nature. And so 
over the years, I've learned a little bit about gluten and non-gluten products, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know a lot about sourdough bread. I really don't. So when you came in, this smells so good, and she baked it this morning, and I thought, this is really good, and she brought me a slice, I can tell. Mm -hmm. So um, if not, I'm going to break off a hunk of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, then let's tell, it, tell us what is in this and how you began to put this together. Okay. Um, the wheat right now, there's been kind of an awakening to our situation with our white flour. And wheat right now is, is coming into kind of getting a little bit of a bad rap. There's a lot of people that all of a sudden are gluten intolerant. That's true, and I don't even know what that means, but I, they say I should avoid it. Yeah, and um, anyway, you know, there, in, the, in the whole kernel of wheat, there's 15 plus minerals and vitamins. And in white bread, white flour, there's it starts out with absolutely nothing, and then they add four synthetic vitamins. Wait, yeah. say all that again. In the whole kernel of wheat, there's there's 15 plus. They haven't even discovered how much nutrition is in wheat. It is the king of grains. It is so nutritious. Wow, that much difference. So nutritious, and and um, I could tell you a little bit about the history right now. I guess do um, it. Do it. And I had to kind of <coughs> unravel this on my own, but then I found a book in the library that confirmed everything I had learned. And I'll give that book in a minute, but, um, okay, so way back in the early 1900s and before, every little community had their own little mill where they ground their flour. They would grow their wheat and take it to the mill, kind of like the little red hen. <laughs> and, uh, <coughs> and they got this really big mill going there on the Mississippi, the Pillsbury Mill, and there <coughs> um, they would grind the, the wheat for this big community of Minneapolis well, and St. Paul. Well, all of a sudden the railroads tied the whole country together and people realized that they could, could ship their flour all over the country and make lots of money. Well, hmm. when they did this, there was too long a time between the time that they had milled it and that people ate it because once the, the wheat kernel is ground, it begins to lose its vitamins. It oxidizes. So we have all these wonderful little grain mills now that burst the kernel and give us flour. But they, uh, once the wheat is oxidized, the, the vitamin E is gone in 72 hours. Oh my goodness. And so any wheat that is ground should be kept in the freezer so that it doesn't lose its nutrition. That helps some, somewhat. Are we talking store-bought or any kind of whatever? Yeah, we, the store-bought whole wheat, I'm really, really glad to say this <laughs> <laughs> on the air, is pretty much dead. Really? If, if you buy whole wheat at the store, it's pretty much so dead. So when it says dead nine grain, it has nine grain, but it's dead? It's been, it's been oxidized, and the, gr the flour has been oxidized for too long a time, and pretty much all pretty much all the nutrition so is gone. we think that we're giving kids a, a nice healthy sandwich and we're not mm -hmm. even if you roll the grains if you, you know you get a bunch of wheat and you roll them and then you stick them in a bag they're going to lose nutrition because of the oxidizing so wheat is so wonderful but it needs to be ground and used right now yeah okay so the so pills if you, <laughs> if you grind it bake with it that day mm -hmm. and then you stand a better chance of the getting some yeah. nutrient okay yeah. that's good I certainly didn't know that mm-hmm and um, so anyway, the Pillsbury Company, there is this big mill, and they start shipping wheat, wheat flour all over the country, and the wheat becomes, is dead because it's been so long that it's been ground, and people start getting sick. They're not getting the nutrition they need from, from their bread. And, hmm. um, and so the government steps in and says, you can't do this anymore. You have you know, people are not nourished on this bread. So they pull back and they devise the system of what we know today is white wheat, white flour. And basically they take off all of the bran, they take off all the germ, they leave only the endosperm, which is the white part. And then they, they make that into a white flour and they add in four synthetic, synthetic vitamins and minerals. There was a movement some years ago to add calcium, but that failed. So they haven't added even calcium, but there's two vitamin Bs, 
I think when you look on the label, it's riboflavin and niacin or something. And then these a, are synthetics, and they're synthetic vitamins, and they stick them into the flower after it's if it's been totally all the good has been stripped off. So there's yeah, no. You can go to the market and just watch all kinds of bread fly off the shelves on a Saturday when it's crowded. Mm -hmm. Because people don't know. I certainly didn't know. No. So no, we're no. just eating this is adding pounds to us and absolutely. Yes, no basically what it is is starch with a few synthetic vitamins. Stug. <laughs> Plus it doesn't have the fiber. I'm gonna the go home whole, and throw everything away. Whole grain flour has fiber that helps the whole thing move through your intestines. Right. And I read an article in the paper a few years ago that white sugar and white flour are basically the same thing to the body. Killers. Yeah, so if you take a white piece of white bread and put it with sugar on it, you know, with the jam or whatever, you're, you've got sugar on top of sugar and you're eating sugar. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Oh, all right. So you're recommending... That you get a, a little whole meal. There's several varieties. You can Google, Google up the Wonder Mill and the one that's made pretty close right here. Um, the Blendtec Mill, I think it is. Kitchen Mill, something like that. And you can grind. I mean, if the pioneers could have seen us, you know, able to grind our own bread and our, our own flour in our own home. What a That'd miracle that would have been. Oh, my goodness. So, so you're recommended to get uh, uh, everybody have a little mill, mm -hmm. and yeah, are they four or five hundred dollars? No, what are we talking about? I think you can get them on sale for one hundred and fifty to two hundred. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. And they're Great good investment. forever. Yep. The electric. Or yep. Are, oh, electric. Good. You can also get um, hand grind ones that will grind it just fine enough now for for your bread. Really? Yeah. So if you want ones in case something happens, mm -hmm. all right, you're mm -hmm. going to have both. Okay. Yep. All right. So now tell us uh, what you've done here. Well, so um, I, well, now to this add is to called that, what, leavening bread? I, I always wondered how, what I could say to back up what I, the statements I've made, but, but I found this little book in the library in Orem one day called um, Cooking with Whole Grains by Ellen and, and Vrest, V-R-E-S-T. Orton and in the beginning of their little cookbook they had written what they call the mystery of the mill totally confirmed everything that I had found out in print now it's out of print now that book but um, but it told this whole story and the reason that this Mr. Uh, Orton had had said this or had written this is because he he could see this happening to our country he, he lived at a time when this was actually happening. The, the white flour was replacing the whole grains. And, and he, he was appalled, and he wanted to write down almost a history of what was happening in his day, and that's what he did, and it survived in his book. Great. Yeah. So Super. he kept that so that it could be found. Now, mm -hmm. is all of what you're saying so far on your DVD? I don't know if... More or less. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of that is, okay. I think. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk about what you've actually done here. What is leavening bread? If I hear that, it's somehow it's related to something Jewish, and <laughs> that's about where I go with that kind of bit of okay, knowledge. All, so. all bread is leavened okay. by something. And in our country, we have leavened it with yeast. Commercial yeast is what I call it, to distinguish it from the natural. Now, there are wild yeasts all around us all the time, on our skin, on our cupboards, on our walls, everywhere. And this is a good, natural wild yeast that's also in the intestines. Okay. And this, this is in a, a nice balance in our intestines with good bacteria and wild yeast. Okay. And that's part of the whole digestive system in our body. So we, have, we naturally have yeast, mm -hmm. and that helps us digest. Mm -hmm. And on the outside of the grape, a grape that okay. has not been sprayed, there is a lot of this natural wild yeast. Well, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I have used to make my starter. Now, when I was in high school, I read a book called House of Seven Gables. We all did. Oh, did you? Okay. <laughs> sure. Well, do you know that I remembered all for years and years that this woman said, I'm going to go, she was telling her sister or something, I'm going to go make yeast now. And that just struck me like, what? We have to buy yeast from the store. Yeah. We can't go make yeast. And then I, I realized years later that that's what she was going to do. She was going to go make some sourdough. S some sourdough. Mm -hmm. Is that called a starter? Yeah, and that's ca I, I call it a starter, and a lot of people call it a starter. But there's a difference between everlasting yeast, 
and starter, uh, really natural leaven starter. Everlasting yeast is, yes, you can put commercial yeast in with flour, white flour, whatever, put it in a bag, give it to your neighbor, and it will continue to grow and you can feed it. But that's everlasting yeast. Okay. My bread has no yeast in it that is commercial. Now, most, most commercial yeast for a long time was, was scraped off the inside of the beer vats when they made beer. And I don't know if you remember the little cakes of yeast that your mother sure, had. You yeah, bet. Mm -hmm. I remember and then it was. I remember what they tasted like. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And and then they dehydrated it into little packets. Then in 1982, about 1982, they introduced rapid rise yeast. Okay. And um, I remember that. If you and that pay, has if taken you over. If you didn't pay attention, though, if you got it too hot or too whatever, it didn't work. I remember oh, yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Well, now everybody, all the bakers, everybody uses rapid rise yeast. And you can't even hardly find the traditional, they call it traditional yeast anymore. Well, that yeast is not made from the vat, uh, um, uh, the inside of the vats that, you know, gathers there. It, it is made from chemicals. It is? Yeah. And it is extremely aggressive. Um, well, we were going to. You mentioned this, and you mentioned something about candida, uh -huh. and practically every men and women yeah. over the years have had so much candida. And I was married to a surgeon at one point, mm -hmm. and so I heard this. and And then you take more medication to get rid of the candida, which creates candida. A lot of an antibiotic medicines create candida, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's a nightmare. Yeah. And so we eat it in so many things, particularly our bread. Mm -hmm. And now this has none. Well, and candida is a condition. You can, you can research it on the web and really get the facts on candida. Um, and I was going to talk about that just a little bit later. Okay. You, you want to wait? We'll, All right. Well, let's get, we'll let's work, work till you get there then. Yeah. Um, but anyway, every bread that you make is leavened. Uh, of course, the old Jewish people um, had an unleavened bread, which is a cracker from what I understand. I, right, I think I'm is. right on that. Mm -hmm. They didn't have time to let it sit to to raise, but um, but the I just wanted to mention about this rapid rise yeast is so aggressive that um, it never ever neither kind of commercial yeast the traditional or or the um, rapid rise should never be eaten raw because it will attach on the inside of your intestine and begin to grow. So when you're licking off the spoon, don't no. Don't ever eat the, the bread dough. And my mother always made white homemade bread. Oh, I know. We and she did. would never let us eat the, the dough. Oh, we ate it. We, we loved it, so we mm -hmm. ate it. Mm -hmm. And she would never, I don't know, she just knew that we weren't supposed to. But if you research That's the commercial true. yeast, it will tell you never eat it raw. It has to be cooked and killed so it's not alive. And otherwise it will grow inside your intestines and upset that really nice balance between yeast and back and good bacteria if you get too much yeast growing there and and it overpowers the good bacteria and th all those little things then you have candida and then that brings other problems too mm -hmm. I'm speaking with Gwen Lund L-U-N-D and a new friend and thank goodness we're glad to know about these things Gwen and appreciate your background I also just want to mention the Cayenne again, and I do have a seven-day trial pack for those of you that heard me talk about this now for about five weeks. Uh, if you would like to try, you can join in our chat room and let us know that you would like to purchase one of these for $20. And uh, next week, I'm going to have a drawing for four or five of these, so be aware of that. But find our chat room on pat.utahvalleylive.com and let us know you're there. You could be watching, but we don't know you're there unless you let us know. And on the radio, um, please uh, just know how much we appreciate your being there. And one of these days, we hope to have a telephone system where you can call in mm. and talk to us that way. But meanwhile, mm. if you have a computer, jump in on our chat room and uh, let us know that you're there. We appreciate that. Um, and also, I want to ask, where did, how can you get a recipe? Uh, did you put all this together yourself? or I did. Okay. This is so this is trial and error. Yeah, but okay. this is the common bread in Europe. And when we lived there for three years, you, well, it was in the, the 70s, you couldn't find white bread hardly. Now over in Europe, they've gone, they've quite westernized. They've started putting yeast in their breads. And every little bakery uh. you, can go, you go into, we went over in 05 with a group of um, semester abroad BYU students. And you can go into any little bakery and say, I want the sourdough. And they know exactly which breads are sourdough and which ones are yeast. 
really mm -hmm. interesting. Um, okay, so is this a recipe you share with other people? Absolutely, and and it, and it's on my DVD. You okay. know, I don't have a written copy today, but uh, the procedure uh, of the bread is this a is little bit of, this different. Is just, we're holding up a green DVD for you on the radio. It says pure bread sourdough has a picture of a loaf of bread with Gwen Lund, L-U-N-D, and we know that it's out in Linden in the um, herbal shop. Yeah, out in, there. Orm. In, uh, in, in Orm. In Orm. Oh, herb. it's in Orm too? Yeah, in Orm in the herb shop. In Orm in the herb mm -hmm. shop. You can buy it today. Okay, there. well, what I thought the herb shop was out there across from Walmart, so where are you talking about? Oh, no, this is, it used to be Dr. Christopher's herb shop, and it's across from Shop Co., just south of Center Street. On the In west Orm. side, okay, uh -huh. west side got of the it. Road. On the west side, and okay. It's called the herb shop. You're right. Now. It's changed. Uh, Dr. Christopher, I guess he's moved on down to Springville mm -hmm. or somewhere. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Now I know where you are. So mm -hmm. they can get this there, and mm -hmm. it's about fifteen dollars, as, as well as we can remember. Yep. And then we also have a starter, so that you can make your own starter at oh, home. Oh, and they sell we have it a right dehydrated there? starter. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Well, let's learn some more about this. Uh, because we're all starving to death and ready for the, you to break this open and have lunch <laughs> around this bread. All right, so the recipe is one you put together. Yes. Now, I've already said, I'm just, I just don't cook anymore. It has to be simple. I have to be able to do it in a few minutes because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just running, running, running like I haven't for years and years. Mm -hmm. So how complicated is this? Okay, with the natural... Do I need a slide rule to get through this? No. <laughs> with the natural leaven leavening, you're going to let it soak for about seven to 12 hours. So I either no overnight or all day I long. I have no idea what you're talking about. Soak uh, to me means a tub of water. Oh yeah, okay. So <laughs> you, you're gonna make up your dough and you're gonna let it sit there. And Just on covered. the counter, mm -hmm, covered. covered. Okay, I remember my mom doing that. And know. and um, that's when the little um, the little yeast, wild yeast start working. It's and they just sit there and kind of the wild, move a little bit like yeast. this and okay. that actually does the develops the gluten for you so you okay. never really have to put it in a machine or sit there and knead it you know for 15 minutes or anything like that how many ingredients about basically water flour a little bit of salt and the starter that's I it? never use sugar it's pure real sourdough never uses sugar like yeast bread does well, that's uncomplicated enough that I could probably get through it yeah. without hurting the bread. And then <laughs> you, can, the bread. you can be gone working all day and come home and slice up your loaves and put them in the oven. Ooh. So it okay. isn't, because there's almost a disadvantage to the rapid rise. They say, oh, you can have bread start from start to finish in two hours, but you've got to be there and you can't let that over. If someone, something calls you away from your kitchen, you're going to come back and it's going to be a mess. So, so this sits this, overnight in mm -hmm. just room or temperature. All day. Mm -hmm. Okay, or all day. Six seventy eight hours, eight degrees. Seventy eight degrees is its okay. ideal temperature. Okay. And um and with just a little practice it's it's super easy because there's there's no complicated and work. so then you just mold it into this it's kind of a little it looks it you, looks very european you round can loaf. you can bake it in pans if you want but i'm too lazy i like to just bake it on st the stone there's no pans to wash so you get a um like a pizza stone and that's what you preheat in your oven and that's what you bake it on like a rock yeah it's almost like flat a flat rock, rock mm -hmm. and put it in the oven and mm -hmm. bake it in mm -hmm. a million years, I wouldn't have thought of that, and I could have been <laughs> on a camping trip, and I wouldn't have thought of it. In Europe, they do it in the big brick ovens, you know. And put a bunch of them in at one time. Mm -hmm. So would this work in a pizza oven kind oh, yeah. of thing? Yeah. Same kind of deal? Mm -hmm. I, have yeah. a friend, I have a friend who has a little toaster oven, and she just has a little stone in there, and she makes one loaf because she just herself lives at oh, home. Oh, that's house. interesting. Well, now, let's say, can she make it ahead of time? She can't. So you make the one and you cook that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, but you put your starter back in. Yeah. And we're going to talk all about the starter. Do you Good. want me to do that now? Yeah. Let's do that now. Okay. The starter is basically a little, begins way back when I made it five years ago. Now, I've kept it going. But the originally, when I did not have any starter, I wanted to have some starter. Um, I took a, uh, some water, like a half a cup of water. A teaspoon of grape juice that had not the grapes had not been sprayed, and I tried to to use water that hadn't didn't have chlorine in it, but that's not really essential, but it's nice. And then I let that sit uncovered on my counter. And wait, just the grape juice? The, no, the water, the flour, and the grape juice. Okay, so okay, but flour again is and whole wheat flour. Whole wheat flour. You can also use rye. Rye makes a really good starter. Oh, that would be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And very quickly. So three ingredients we're talking mm -hmm. about. And mm -hmm. sits. 
sits there on the counter and each day you feed it. And that's the thing with sourdough. It has to be fed at room temperature because it eats up its food in there. What am I feeding it? And you're feeding it more flour <laughs> and a little more water. That's all you're feeding it. So it starts out and it grows. It's mm -hmm. going to grow. And in the pioneer days, this is the kind of leavening that came across the plains. And some of the pioneers dehydrated it because they knew they didn't have wheat along the way, so they didn't want to lose it, so they dehydrated it. But some of them, like, like the old uh, gold diggers and stuff, they had their crock of sourdough, and they attached it to their wagon, and it, it just bubbled over all day long. And they, but they used it probably three times a day, and every time they used it, they fed it a little more flour. Oh, that's interesting. And if, if you don't feed it, it will rot. Okay, so let's hold this jar up. Okay. <clears throat> so this is a jar of starter. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you can have any amount. I have quite a bit more than you probably would, you know. I would say so. <laughs> but it, it develops little bubbles, and it's, it's had its ride to the radio station, so the bubbles are kind of gone. But it usually has bubbles all throughout, and you can smell it. And um, Oh, I can smell it without you taking the lid off. Oh, that is wonderful. And now, this won't hurt if you stuck your finger no, in it. No, you can eat it. Can you can <laughs> eat it just as it is, absolutely. Oh, it's part of the whole lacto-fermented foods that we don't have in our culture anymore. We used to have naturally lacto-fermented pickles and beet pickles and all these things, and all those have become commercialized and done with vinegar and ruined. And most of the sourdough bread in the United States is um, it's a variety of sourdough. So you'll have white flour. They put vinegar in it to make it taste sour, and that and they call it sourdough. Does this taste sour? Because I've never mm -hmm. thought of sourdough being that sour, but mm -hmm. the, there is a sour the taste. The starter tastes sour, okay. but the bread does not. I, okay, that was the next question. So you can make it sour, sour but it, is, it doesn't have to taste sour. Okay. And in our family, we don't like it too much. Okay, now sour. for the radio audience, she's holding up about a quart uh, mm -hmm. jar full of starter. And it's kind of a squat jar so that the mouth is very large and you can dip it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say I'm going to make some bread, which is a total joke. <laughs> but let's say I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to try this. Yeah, up. I'm going to get and you so to And so I'm going to dip out how much for, let's say, just a small loaf? Well, for one small loaf, you would probably use a teaspoon. Really? Is yeah. that all? But I have a large family. I make four large loaves at a time, and I use eight cups of water. And I use about a half a cup of starter. Okay, so now I'm going to do this teaspoon of starter, and I'm going to put it in whole wheat flour. In, into the water first. Into the water first. Mm -hmm. So like if you had two cups of water, you would add okay. the starter and the salt, and okay. then swish that to dissolve it. And then you'd add your flour to the point that it says on in my DVD. It's, it's a stickier, a little bit stickier batter than regular yeast bread, but... Um, but it's very similar. And, and everything in it is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I know yeast is just simply not good for us. And to hear that there's so much synthetic stuff put yeah. into all of this is very yeah. alarming, shall I say? Yes. Okay. And uh, so the recipe is simple, and it's on your DVD, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'll also, <coughs> from the, the dough, you can make all kinds of other things. You can make um, tortillas on the griddle. You can make focaccia bread with... On a, on a cookie sheet, spreading out the dough mm -hmm. and putting olive oil on it and, you know, wonderful Italian seasonings. And oh, how good. Pop that in the everybody oven. Everybody loves that. And oh, that e would be Everybody so loves the bread. I've never met anybody that didn't like the taste of the bread. Oh, goodness. So. Well, you're going to have to, while you're talking, break off a piece there. Okay. I, have to, I have to have some of this bread. Do you want some over there? Okay. Kent says he needs some. All and right. I don't eat a lot stick, of stick a hand over here. salt. I, I can't. try I to not get it eat a lot of salt, so most people would probably put more salt in it mm. than I do. That is so good. My goodness, we're feeding <laughs> everybody here. Okay. This has, I always make it with a little rye and a little oats, too. So it I has, can taste the rye in this. In Germany, they called it a mixed bread, and they put several grains in it, and that's my favorite. Okay, so you, you don't have you, to. You got nine children. They're coming home for Thanksgiving. So how many of these you're going to put together? A bunch. <laughs> I usually make four at a time, and it, it lasts us, you know, a week. It's it's neat. If you if you didn't have any preservatives in the Wonder Bread that you buy, I don't probably shouldn't men mention Wonder. Any bread. but any white bread, it would be so stale the next day. It would just be awful. And so they put preservatives. That's the other thing. They have put preservatives in this white bread. And since 1920, they have been putting chemicals and preservatives in our foods 
to the point that there are thousands of chemicals and preservatives now well, and, being and used. I'm going to say, look how many people are having stomach problems mm -hmm. and digestion problems. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's serious. Yeah. I'm trying to think of one that um, a young man, it starts with a C. What's that called? Um, it, it's just his whole intestines are all just messed up. Uh, colitis. Colitis. Mm -hmm. And I think this would be horrible. Um, to have to live like that, but yeah. we do it to ourselves. Yeah, but we don't know any better. No, our food has, um, for convenience mm -hmm. and money, just like the word of wisdom says, conspiring men have ruined a lot of our food, and so we have to get back to the basic foods, the unprocessed foods, the un, you know, not the quick things, not the processed foods in the grocery stores. Ta no. Talk about those, those things again that you said they could make. We can make tortillas and. Tortillas, you can make um, pita bread. Oh, I love pita bread. Yeah. When I was in Israel, I lived on pita bread. Mm -hmm. I absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. And focaccia, and then you can all do all the things you I don't like. Know what focaccia Cinnamon is. rolls. What's focaccia? focaccia is the flat, you just push it it's out on a cookie bread. sheet. It's an Italian. And then you can slice it's it. It's like a pizza dough, only okay. just the bread with a little seasoning. Okay. And um, on the radio, if you can there? hear, I am chewing away here. <laughs> and this is so good. And obviously, Thank if you. I if you're on pat.utahvalleylive.com, you're watching me do this in front of you. <laughs> so sorry about that. <laughs> mm, no, I'm really not because it tastes good. No problem. Um, and then you can do what else? You mentioned cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls. That's one of our favorites at our house. Now, how do you do? How do you put? Well, you if you take one of the loaves that you've cut out of uh -huh. dough okay. and you just spread it out flat and make mm -hmm. your cinnamon roll roll it up and bake it in the same oven that you were baking on your, your other stone. four mm -hmm. well i put it in a pan okay. then i put the pan on the stone on the stone mm -hmm. in your oven mm -hmm. with the other loaves where do you find your stones i got my stone at bed bath and beyond and it's quite large it fit it fills my oven okay and it's half she's showing thick. something about uh, two feet Oh, foot yeah. and a half, foot and a half. Foot and a half. Okay. It fills my oven, basically, one of my racks. Wow. I keep it in my is oven all flat? the time. Is mm -hmm. it flat just, stone? It's just a flat stone. If you if you want, you can go buy a granite stone at, at the lumber yard. Okay. And that would and, work. Mm -hmm. That works wonderfully, and it's a little bit cheaper to buy. And so. you just leave it in your oven. Mm -hmm. Craziness. I, I love it. I love. Who would have known? <laughs> all right. Let's see. Um <clears throat> Why do you say it's easy to make? We talked about that. You make other things. We know about your D DVD and the Candida connection. That's a good thing to call it because it really is. I mean, Candida is awful and so hard to get rid of. Um, it's it's bad for your whole system, your whole body. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And how about allergies now? But people that have problems with wheat, what do you do with that? Okay. Um, a lot of people think that they're allergic to wheat, and they're discovering that they're allergic to the yeast. <laughs> Believe really? it or not. Yeah. Because this rapid rise yeast is a new guy on the block. It just came out in 1982. And there's a fellow on the, on the web. His name is L Leonard Caldwell. He feels like the candida problems are associated with the tumors, the cancer tumors, that the candida actually holds the tumor together. So that's new research just coming out. It, is Leonard got anything up on Google or mm -hmm. anywhere? Yes, several right. websites. Say Leonard his last name again. Coldwell. C O L D W E L L. Yeah. And he's he says I can cure cancer, absolutely. Really? Yeah. That's a big statement. I can cure cancer. Mm -hmm. And what would be one of those things that he would say? Well, he changes your diet, and the body heals itself. So you get out of the white bread and you get out of the white mm -hmm. sugar yeah one of the and you big get out of yeast mm -hmm. one of the big influences we had a child with a um, health crisis she started epilepsy and the doctors told us that she would have it all her whole life and we found a man whose name was Paul Latham lives he lived in Fillmore he's passed away now but his wife is still living and and they taught us how to eat right they taught us about getting rid of all of the processed stuff all the chemicals going back to the basics and she completely healed Wow. And we got her off her drugs, and she's never had another seizure. She's 18 now. For heaven's sakes. So it's the body heals yourself. It's in a m most amazing way when it's given the proper foods. What did he suggest? I mean, we eat a lot of stuff. We've grown up with kids grew up mm -hmm. with Jack in the Box and McDonald's and, you know, yeah, terrible fast foods, and it's hard habit to break. 
Um, but what are they recommending? Yes, lots of greens. Lots of vegetables. <coughs> Base your diet on vegetables instead of meat. But meat is okay in small amounts like the Japanese. I read last year, two years ago, the China study. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I read the introduction. By the time I got through the introduction, I was ready to cry to think I had been so cruel to my body. Mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. just amazed. Yeah, and that totally supports and they had, polyphony. They, and they had proof. I mean, they had done all these studies. And... And the things that we do to our bodies, and they say, you know, cut out the meat, cut out the beef, and they, uh, the family, I can't think of the guy's name, that they authored this for some reason, I can't remember, but they had a, a beef farm, that's what they raised beef, mm. and here he had to stop eating all of that, because he realized people were dying, yeah. just from having it take six days to, for beef to digest, and go, die, mm -hmm. and, and go through your system, and mm -hmm. rot, yeah, and to rot actually. before you expel it. Yeah. And so, they, so he says, lots of greens, lots of vegetables, mm -hmm. and fish is the best, and then chicken, and then beef, you know. But small amounts, like in a stir fry, a few pieces is okay. But we, most Americans, eat bre meat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I know. And they don't think they've eaten until they've had meat. And so you guys stop that. You're not mm -hmm. vegan. No, vegan is too extreme. And, but you're kind of vegetarian, leaning mm -hmm. that direction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and when you base your meal off vegetables, you get enough. Well, you can eat a lot of them, first of all. Yeah. No there are not enough calories in them unless you're loading them with butter. Yeah. So and, and raw vegetables have have twice the, or 50% of the nutrients are gone when you cook the vegetable. So don't live on canned vegetables. That's not going to help you. They're, it's pretty I much dead I had more fun food. with the garden this summer. Mm-hmm. Um, when my grandkids came over to kind of help in, end it up and get all the corn uh, we got some really good corn and some that didn't turn out so good. I don't think they got enough sun. We had plenty of water, but not maybe enough sun. But mm -hmm. it was so sweet. We stood there in the garden with two grandkids, and we were just eating corn on the cob. Yeah, It was cooking. really fun. And so tomatoes right off the bush. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really, I'm never going to do it again, I'm sure. <laughs> but <laughs> I say I made fix this garden. No, my son, my grandchildren, they they planted it, they tilled it, and I watered it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was really fun to do that, and I felt so so much healthier through the summer. Yes. Lots of string beans. Love the string beans. I yes. had a bumper crop of string beans, bushels. Well, and, and the other thing, biggie, and this is, people get mad about this one, give up the milk. Well, I gave up milk a long time ago yeah. because okay. it creates a lot of phlegm. Mm -hmm. And I, if I even come near any dairy products before coming on the air, I'm hacking and coughing because it creates so much phlegm yeah. in my body. And the trouble with milk is it's been homogenized and pasteurized. And scientists have proven that homogenizing helps lay down plaque in the veins. So Wait, it's contributed. Say that again. The homogenizing of the milk helps. That makes the milk so it it actually helps lay down plaque in the veins oh my goodness and so um anyway if we could eat the raw milk that's better however okay, that was a question we just got in our chat room oh okay and you know when the cows first came over from the old world to from the isles of guernsey in jersey they were about the size of a goat but really? we, yes but when america got a hold of them and the big ideas for money and conspiring men, like it says in the Word of Wisdom, they hybridized the, go the cows up to be what they are today. And their babies are not, are huge. They are huge. And it changed the milk. And the, the fat molecule in the milk is way too big for our human body. But you look at a goat, a goat is about the size of a, of a human, and the baby is about the size of a human baby, and goat milk is the closest thing to human milk that you can find, except think, reindeer milk. I think if I'm recalling, I had a granddaughter that couldn't tolerate milk, but she could handle goat milk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and all humans can tolerate goat milk just fine, especially raw. Well, what do you think about, well, and, and raw milk then is um, uh, Redmond Farm sells it at Real Foods mm -hmm. and Orm. Oh, okay, so they do sell raw. I didn't think anybody could sell raw milk anymore. I keep hearing things that... Yeah, they, They've shut them down here and there, and some farms here in Utah. Yeah, there's um, been legislation in that regard. Um, and so so cow milk raw well, is better okay. than, than um, homogenized and pasteurized. We're, we're getting this in our uh, chat here. Sign a waiver. So the stores have to sign a waiver that they're carrying oh, yeah. raw milk. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, how about things like um, uh, almond milk and rice milk? Good. What do you think about that? Yeah. 
Okay, They're good, especially I love, homemade. I love the almond milk. Mm -hmm. And I have talked to somebody that made their own almond milk. They ground the almonds up. Yeah, in the blender. Right, and it mm -hmm. makes milk. Mm -hmm. Who who would have known that if I hadn't been yeah. told that? Yeah. I love almonds. And almonds are the king nut. I mean, they're so nutritious. So, I uh, I worked with a, a couple of young girls that were you know watching their weight and and keeping their energy up. They were at computers all day long, and but I watched them snack on raw uh, almonds, and uh, and then they then I learned that they were really good if you put them in a little dish of water in the refrigerator overnight mm -hmm. soak them. and there's and soak them they're mm -hmm. so soft to eat and so good the next day yes and I found also because I was diabetic I had to get all the sugar out of my system mm -hmm. and for the last year I've been really good about that and okay. they actually have a sweet taste yeah and without you know you get used to it mm -hmm. you really get to taste food like it is yes um, well, now, did we, did we cover everything? Because there were a couple of things I mentioned early on, and you said, let's wait on that. So we got the DVD. We're going to know where to get that at the Herb Store in Orem. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think we talked Are you available for release societies and things like that, or is your time just totally eaten up at this point? You know, I, I am available, but that's why I made my DVD. Okay, so because you can sell the I, DVD. I was giving classes, okay. and it was a lot of work and took a lot of time. And I finally just thought, I, I need to get modern and make a DVD. So I would love it if Relief Societies would get my DVD and show it at a meeting. That would be great. That makes sense. You know. Have you got another one coming out? <laughs> no, not at the moment. Okay. <laughs> I'll challenge you. Find a new one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this is wonderful. This It sounds like you can make biscuits with this, just mm -hmm. about everything you can think of that you can buy in a bread stage. But do it. I love the fact that it has no yeast. English muffins on the, on oh, the stove, not in in the in the stove but on the stove you can make bagels oh everything. the bagels would be wonderful mm -hmm. i'm talking with i'm pat sheranian somebody asked me the other day and said you should mention something once in a while uh, who you are so i am pat sheranian and my guest today is gwen lund l-u-n-d and obviously she's uh, got a mission to perform here <laughs> and i love this because you have a passion for this and it's been fun to have so many people on the air who have passions for what they're doing and, and they found their niche and they love it um and i boy it's changed your life i bet and uh, with nine children how many loaves have you baked that's a, <laughs> can you and I, I have seven boys and so i you have, have seven boys yeah seven of my children are boys and i raised my boys on whole wheat bread with yeast you know the traditional yeast and i always felt like that was something that really helped help them be strong you know and because I had the whole kernel and I knew enough about it. But then when I got the sourdough, I really was flying on air because I just... <laughs> That's great. And one other thing on my notes, okay. I, I have been... I need someone to do more research about this, but a few years ago, the, the, several bakeries opened with whole grain breads. But what they were doing to get this high loaf that um, is like white bread is they were putting in extra gluten. And I think the commercial name is Vital Gluten or something. I tried that one time, and I just had the worst feeling that I shouldn't be putting more gluten into my bread than was designed by nature. And I think maybe that is one of the reasons why we have so much gluten intolerance. But I would love some scientists to study that and find out if that really has an effect. What does gluten do? Gluten is, gives the structure to the bread so that it will rise. What does it do in your body? Well, it's a pro it's a protein, so, right. so in the normal. So it's there's some digested. people that just cannot digest it. Is that why they have to? I guess I, I was guess general manager happened. of a health food store in Orm at one point, and we had a whole section of non gluten products. People could not tolerate gluten, mm -hmm. and they were absolutely religious about not putting anything in their mouth that had gluten in it. And I didn't really understand. Mm -hmm. uh, the process then so it can be very dangerous for some people apparently it can be and um, if your body is weak you need to strengthen your body first and then you can handle gluten oh that's a good way to put it okay yeah so it's, you you would it's a sign of a weak <coughs> kind of a weak body <coughs> a gluten intolerance <coughs> oh that's scary okay but so you can strengthen your body very easily by eating good food okay let's talk about your website Mm -hmm. And uh, what's what's it going to be? How can it's they called naturalsourdough.com, and it's not up, but it'll be up in about a week. So, oh, so you're in the process. Yeah, do you I got this <coughs> chance to do the radio before before it was up. But now <laughs> well, we're going to get going on. We'll, it, so. we'll have you back again this time and bring sandwiches, would you please? Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. 
Oh, no, I'm not. Um, okay, so let's go over a couple of things here, and we've got um, about nine minutes or so. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some of this again. You were going to give us the name of a book. Did that? Did you find that? Was that the book, oh. Cook with... Uh, yeah, it was called Cooking with Whole Grains by Orton. Okay, Cooking with Whole Grains. And it's now out of print, but, you know, you might be able to find it. It might be online. Everything seems to be. Yeah, that's true. And it backs up everything I said about the railroads and the changes in the mills. And, and you, you're you not sure where to get a little grinder mill, but... Um, there's uh, there's several brand names. There's uh, Wonder Mills, um, Kitchen Mill... And you, if you just Google up kitchen uh, wheat grinder, uh, you can get it. And I know you can get it at certain stores in the valley. Too. I have to think the hand uh, hand grinder would be less expensive, mm -hmm. and uh, would be a sure thing to have. Yeah. So for young couples that don't have expendable money right now, that would be something that they could do, mm -hmm. and grind it. And how difficult is that? I remember <laughs> grinding wheat as a child, but I do not remember if it was difficult. This this grinder, and I'm trying to think of the name of it, I think it's, anyway, you can attach it to a bicycle and sit there riding and get your exercise while you're grinding. Your no, that's my idea. That works. <laughs> that works for me. And we, <coughs> Gwen Lund is with me, and we want to talk a little bit more about this CD, uh, DVD. <coughs> you might mention some of the things that are in this, Gwen, on the back. and. Mm -hmm. Let's um, go through those bullet points. I think they're wonderful. Okay. This bread is the best nutrition. And another person to back me up that I didn't tell you about is Sally Fallon, who has written a book called Nourishing Traditions. She What's her last name? Fallon, F-A-L-L-O-N. Okay. And she is really on a crusade, a wonderful crusade, to help people wake up to how bad the food is in this country and, and how they can change their diet. And she is associated with the Pottinger Institute in, Cal in California, which was started by a dentist who saw many, many people with awful teeth and wondered what the difference was. So he went, when he retired, he went and studied all these cultures in the world with his wife. He traveled all around. He found very poor, poor cultures whose children's teeth were beautiful. They never had cavities. What was the difference? And he determined that it was nutrition and, and um, absolutely, you know, the, the shape of the mouth when the child is forming, all those things, so they have enough room for their teeth and don't have to have braces and all these things. And anyway, she now um, travels the country doing lectures, teaching people, and has written a couple of books um, to teach people how to do it. And she has recipe in there for naturally leavened bread, too. So uh, Kent Vorkik, who owns UtahValleyLive.com, um, has just put up something for us to take a look at. Amazon.com has Orton's book, Cooking with Whole Grains for two ninety two. dollars That's, $2, that's $2. wonderful. Cent, so it is on Amazon. Wonderful. And I would recommend that for you. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, for all of us, for goodness sakes, we should all have that. It's a wonderful book of recipes on they how to use whole grains. They have copies. Great. So uh, get yours today. For, that would be wonderful to make sourdough bread. Mm -hmm. And I have to ask this because I do have a grandson that is very conscious of health and the particles of uh, radiation and things in the air and um, electrical things and so forth. Uh, this would be, did your boys learn to bake this? I would have to think that was easy enough that they could do this. Oh yeah, I think all my kids could do yeah. it. They don't, they let me because do it. Because this then. would be something I think he could do and he would joy, enjoy cooking on a stone. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be part of what he would enjoy as far as his personality because he's really trying hard to be healthy. Mm -hmm. Works out. Um, there's a lot of bike riding and walking. Mm -hmm. uh, thinks that we're eating all of us terribly. But he was raised in a home where he was raised with health foods. I remember taking him to the market when he was about four years old, and I pulled a loaf of white bread off the shelf, and he said he couldn't eat that. He said, Grandma, you can't make me a sandwich with that because oh, we wonderful. don't eat white bread. Yeah. And that's when I first began looking at it, and that's mm -hmm. been about, I don't know, 27 years ago. Well, no, it wouldn't have been quite that many, about 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I paid a little bit more attention to it. But I think not enough of us are paying enough attention because our teeth do go bad. Mm -hmm. Our health is terrible. And we get most, we get our vitamins and minerals from vegetables and whole grains. And if you don't have whole grains in your diet and you don't have vegetables in your diet, you're not getting the, vi the vitamins and minerals that are needed in your body on every cell. Needs potassium, you know, calcium, all those things. And um, and there are lots of people who never eat vegetables or well, whole What's grains. a good source of uh, potassium? Bananas. That have 
But besides bananas. Oh, besides bananas. Uh, yeah. Is it cauliflower? Did somebody say cauliflower? Oh, maybe. Brussels? Um, um, yeah. Yeah, you can find out for sure. Um, that would be something to type in and find. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think this getting healthy, uh, it, we're going to have to be educated all over again because yeah. everybody wants it quick. They want it done fast. They want it done now. Mm -hmm. And no one wants to take the time. But my gosh, what could be easier than... And we've learned from our medical establish yeah. establishment is to eat whatever you want and then take a drug to fix whatever. You know that's really true. That's not the way to do it. Drugs are not for the body. Oh, I started to say, I, I was at the doctor's this morning and my blood sugars are normal. Everything is normal, 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 mm, normal. So great. Cholesterol is normal. Everything is normal. And uh, one of the reasons, I swim every morning. Mm. So I do work out for an hour. And, uh, and I that's 50% it. of it. Is it really? It is. You think it's that you much? Have to eat, you have to eat right and you have to exercise. You can't just forget the exercise. Well, the doctor did say, he said, if you want to lose weight, because I've lost some and I would like to lose some more, he said, uh, pick up a 40-pound weight. I said, are you kidding me? He <laughs> said, pick up a 40-pound weight and see if you can do it 10 times. And if you can, then you start burning calories after 10 times. Mm. But he said, just swimming, you're not going to burn that many calories. Mm. Good for you, keeps you moving. Mm -hmm. And certainly as you get older, makes it e easier for us to sit and walk and everything else. Yeah. But I, I really, I, I missed a few days last week, and I paid for it because I could tell. I didn't feel quite as limbered up and going up and down stairs became a little bit more difficult particularly because we were moving furniture mm -hmm. no my son was moving furniture and i was giving <laughs> orders <laughs> well the, the exercise oxygenates your cells deep breathing does too and then um it moves your heart faster than it's normal so it exercises your heart so right. if you have exercises that aren't exercising your heart and you're not feeling that rapid heart increase then so if you're, you're not just really doing a fiddly whole lot. ding around in the water i actually mm -hmm. do a lot of jogging in the water mm -hmm. a really so hard sure jogging yeah and i up. get the water is about maybe three feet and i jog in that and then mm -hmm. i get in deeper water and i i do all the strokes because i was a swimmer for many years mm -hmm. and i love being in the water yeah but uh, it seems to kind of set the date oh okay what did you find dried apricots cantaloupe beets figs honeydew and orange juice all have potassium in them potassium in them. Oh, so that's great. good to know. Great. Didn't know about cantaloupe. I don't know why I wouldn't have thought of that, but I wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, all right, let's t let's talk about this well, DVD because I why this bread. Do you know how many copies are there? I mean, this is. Uh, do they have plenty of these for people? Yeah. In the herb shop uh, yeah. in Orem on State Street, where uh, Dr. Christopher's used to be. Used to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now it's run by the Westmoreland. Right. Susan Westmoreland. Uh, best nutrition. Make and keep your own starter. You don't even have to store the other commercial yeast, you know, if you're doing your food supply. And you can buy a starter there, right? Mm -hmm. It's, just, and yeah, it's so dehydrated, and you go home and put it in water. And you put it, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. And, and then long? it grow it. In just a couple of days, it's all bubbling. And you and just feed it whole wheat. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that if for no other reason to find out if it really works. <laughs> <laughs> and this bread has no commercial yeast. You don't have to knead it for 15, 20 minutes. And... Um, it's a versatile dough. It makes many varieties of things. I am holding dough. up, uh, what is this, about a half a loaf, mm -hmm. and it's heavy, but That's it's also still warm. Yeah. So you took it out of the oven this morning, but it smells so good. And it's interesting because the outside is really crusty. The mm -hmm. whole, it's a huge crust, if you happen to love crusts, and mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. A lot of kids don't. Mm -hmm. But this is the kind of bread also, it is so moist on the inside that the temptation to dig out a handful is really... <laughs> it's actually remember when better you were the kids when you yeah. used to do that? Yeah. It's actually better the day after. Is you, it really? You bake it. Yeah, it's a little less... Well, you on, <coughs> if you're watching us online on your computer, then you can see what this looks like, and it's just wonderful. What the world is that way? It weighs at least three or four pounds. <laughs> and and I, didn't, you know, I tried to make that this morning quick, and it was kind of not my usual. Well, I anyway. love this, so it's good. <laughs> do, do we get to keep it? Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll bring you a better one. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been fun. It's been wonderful to have Gwen on the air with me. I'm Pat Sheranian, thanking you for being with us today. We appreciate you very much, and Utah Valley Live. Bye-bye.